the Lumia Stream Overlay system is already widely used. Nevertheless, users are asking where to find which feature. This overview should help you find your way around. To get started, we first need an overlay. To do this, we go to Overlay in the left sidebar and click on Add Overlay in the top right hand corner. A window opens in which you give the overlay a name and set your resolution. Now the overlay editor opens. As you can see, you see nothing, because we always start from scratch with each new overlay. But what do we already see? Let's start at the top left and work our way down to the bottom right. In the upper left corner you can see the exit. If you click here, the overlay closes. To the right you will see the name you gave the overlay and a small edit icon. Click on the name to rename your overlay and change the resolution again. Then click on confirm to confirm your entries. On the upper right screen you have the button save, revert, copy URL and preview. Save is self-explanatory. This is where you save your design. Revert is only available if you have not yet saved. If you click on it, a pop-up appears and asks if you want to return to the original. All changes that have not been saved by then will be undone. Copy URL copies the URL of the overlay. You can then paste these into a browser source in OBS or in a browser. And on the outside, we have Preview. When you press this button, your browser opens and shows you a preview of what the overlay looks like sent through the URL. Let's go to the left again. There we see the button Add Layer. As the title says, this is where we add layers to our overlay. We will talk about the individual layers in detail in a moment. Below this is a long empty field. This is where your layers will accumulate and can be sorted. This allows you to visually place layers on top of each other. To the right of this, you can see the layer toolbar. Here you have four different tools to adapt your layers to your ideas. The top one is the select tool. With this, your mouse pointer acts like a mouse pointer. You select the layers and can move them and enlarge and reduce them. Below that is the scale tool. While in select mode, you can only change the size of your image or video proportionally, with the scale tool, you can adjust your object individually in all directions. Next comes the crop tool. As the name suggests, you can cut your layers without changing the size of the actual layer. And in the last position is the 3D Warp tool. With this you can move and bend your layer in three-dimensional space. Of course, the most space is taken up by the overlay matrix. This reflects your screen according to the resolution and thus gives you a visual guide as to where your layers will later be seen on the screen. At the bottom left you will find the overlay tutorial, which also gives you help on where to find what. To the right you will see the emulate button. Here you can test your layers later. For example, you can simulate your various Twitch alerts here and even send them to Lumia Stream so that they also trigger alerts. And finally, at the bottom in the middle, you will find the overlay toolbar. Here you will first see two arrows. With these, you can simply undo changes or redo them. Next to it is a magnifying glass with a minus sign. Further to the right, you will find the magnifying glass with a plus. You can use this to zoom in and out. Between the two magnifying glasses is the reset zoom button to return to the default setting and a button to adjust the matrix to the screen. To the right of the plus magnifying glass, we now have the control panel for the grid. Here you can activate or deactivate whether your layers should always align to the grid or not. And last but not least, we have the speaker symbol with which you can switch the sound on and off. Let us now go back to add layer and see what we find there. Click on add layer and the layer library opens. 
This is divided into several main categories. Under Alerts, you will find the Alert Box, which allows you to manage all 100 plus Lumia Stream alerts in one box, and the Emote Box, which allows you to send your audience's emoticons flying across the screen. Under General, you will find the typical standard layer types. Text, to write simple texts. Image, with image you can add your own images, but also gifs from Giphy Antenna. Audio, add an audio, for example, for your Be Right Back screen. Video, add videos. Slideshow, here you can create a slideshow. This works with pictures and videos. Shape, select the pattern from the large shape library and use it, for example, with virtual lights. Basic goal, here you get an empty goal layer that you can fill individually. Timer, adds a countdown or a count up. Gradient light, this layer is specially designed for virtual lights and is described in more detail in the virtual light tutorial. Next comes the label category. Here you will find ready-made labels that you can use. For example, to display your follower count or which song is currently playing on Spotify. Then we come to the goals category. While the basic goal just described is empty, we have already prepared some goals here so that you can use them directly. Hard effects is the next main category. Here you get the appropriate layers for hard effects videos and a hard effects alert box. As a rule, these layers are designed in such a way that you only have to create a command with hard effects and this then appears in the layer. Streaming tools has a bit more content. Here you will find the event list, the chat box, the credits layer, a shoutout layer that triggers with a ready-made SO command, a browser source layer, our polls, and our new Spotify and YouTube Music Now Playing widget. And last but not least, on the left side, we find the games category with the raffle and the spin wheel. For all layers for which there is an extra tutorial, you will find the link in the top right hand corner. As you have certainly noticed, I skipped the emote box and I called interactions games. This is because the devs are so fast with overlay integrations that I can't keep up with my videos. So we divided the emote box to emote box and emote alert box. So you can set each individually. And we have renamed games to interactions as this could have caused some confusion to some users. So now let's go on with the tutorial. Have fun. Bye bye. Almost there. Now we just want to give you a last short overview of the settings. Once you have selected a layer and clicked on it, the individual settings for the layer appear on the right sidebar. This selection can vary from layer to layer. As for example, a management for a text layer makes no sense. I will use the chat box layer as an example as it should have pretty much all variants. At the top, you can give the layer an individual name. This is important if you use overlay actions, otherwise Lumia will not know which layer is meant. Underneath, you will find the layer ID. You only need this if you use custom code. Then comes the chat box settings. These settings differ depending on the layer. Here we have the setting field to set the chat box. A text layer instead has a content field where you enter your message. Below that is the styling tab. Here you can set your font and everything that goes with it. In the appearance field, you have an overview of the size and presentation of your layer. Here are also small tools to better align the box. And really the last option is the virtual light tab. Not all layers are virtual light capable. Therefore, this only appears where it can be used. Do you already use the overlay system from Lumia? Write us in the comments. If you liked the video, leave us a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything new and have a luminous day.